Main menus are simple. Think about it, you just basically have a couple buttons, you press them, and each one does something different. It's very basic. Now, I didn't say they're easy, because you could spend a long time, like days, weeks, on trying to make it look really nice, but we're not gonna be doing that here. We're shooting for five minutes to do this whole menu. By the end of this, hopefully you just have an idea about what it takes, and from there you can spend as much time as you want to make it look better. All right, first things first, you need a background. This could be an image, this could be a color, you could spend 10 years animating it, whatever you wanna do. Put your game title up there, people might forget what they're playing. Next, buttons. Throw them on there. Last step is just to make it when you hover and click on a button, it does something. So let's open up Unity and actually implement this. Just as explained, the first thing we need is our background image. So import whatever image you wanna use. Let's add that to the seam. So right click, UI, image. With it selected, drag our background image onto the source image. Open up the anchor points and hold Alt and hit the bottom right option so that it scales to the screen size. Most important step of any UI, you want to click on your canvas and go down to constant pixel size and change that to scale with screen size. For here, you want to type in your target resolution. Type in 3840 by 2160 if you're targeting 4K. Otherwise, do 1920 by 1080 if you're targeting HD. All right, next step is the buttons. Let's right click on our canvas and go to UI. This is relatively new, but make sure you select button text mesh pro. It'll ask you to import the text mesh pro package. So import essentials. So the only difference between this button and the other one is the text that's attached to it. The default Unity text is pretty bad, so they acquired Text Mesh Pro, which is much clearer at different resolutions, and you have a bunch of cool options like shadows and gradients and things like that. Let's take our button and move it down just a little bit. I'm going to increase the width of mine to maybe 500 by 100. And again, style it how you want. Since I don't have any nice button sprites, I'm gonna just do the opacity trick where you hide the default. For the highlight color, you can just make it a little bit opacity. And for pressed, you make it like halfway or so of opacity. What you get with that is when you hover over the button, you see it a little bit, and when you press it, you see it a little more. On the text object, I'm gonna do auto size, and I'm gonna change the color to white. I'm going to change the text to play, and they default you with some extra materials, so maybe I'll try drop shadow, and that is good enough for me. So we'll rename this play button, control D, duplicate, duplicate. This will be options button, quit button, and we'll update the text to replicate that. I tweak some of the color values just to red instead of white with the same opacity. When I play, here I am. When you hover, you see a little bit. When you click, it's bold. And when it's selected, you can press up and down on your arrow keys. If you have a controller, it should work as well. This is due to the event system that gets generated. So I'm gonna right click on my canvas and create empty and call this main menu. And I'm gonna take the three buttons and just drag it onto the main menu. At this point, we wanna start adding logic to our menu. So if we click on a button and look at the inspector, towards the bottom, we'll see this on click event. And if you add an event to this, you can drag the same object into the corresponding field, and now you can select a function that gets called when you press this button. You can do this with public functions as well from scripts. So we need to actually create a script for this. Let's create a new C-sharp script, and we'll call this main menu. We'll attach it to our main menu object and open it up. In our main menu script, let's get rid of start and update. Let's make a new method called public void play game. Really quickly. Off camera, I set up another scene. So I have this main menu scene that we've been working on, and then I also have this level zero scene I set up, which is just a pretend first level. If you go to File, Build Settings, you'll notice Scenes and Build, and we can actually drag both of these into here. And while we have the scene names of the file names, we also have this index, zero and one. If you kept adding to this, it would increase. This is the scene order that happens in our build. This is something we need to know, because in our script, we can reference a scene manager, and we can load scenes by build index, by scene name, so by string, or you could just load whatever the next scene is in the order. We're taking the active scene, getting the build index, and just adding one, so going to the next in the list, and loading that. You can encapsulate the scene manager class into your own system and use it however you want, but that's all we're gonna do for now. We'll make another method down here, we'll call this public void quit game, and in here we just wanna say application.quit, easy enough. Okay, I'm selecting the three buttons. I'm adding an on-click method. I'm dragging in the main menu. On the play button, I'm going to function, main menu, play game. On the quit button, I'm going to main menu, quit game. I'm clicking on the main menu, duplicate, call this settings menu. I'm deleting play and options, and on quit, I'm calling this back button. On the options button, I'm setting the main menu to false and settings menu to true. And on the back button, I'm setting the settings menu to false and the main menu to true. In this approach, you have both menus on the same scene, but you don't have to. You could also put your settings menu on another scene and load it and go back. In our game, you can hit play. You can press settings, back, and finally, you can also quit.